for part A of this problem, we're starting off with the operator SY, and then we're going to look for its associated eigenvalues and eigenvectors. So if x is the eigenvector, then applying SY to x would give us its eigenvalue multiplied by x. And so this means if I move everything to the left-hand side, we have SY minus lambda times the identity matrix times x is equal to 0. And if we uh, write this out explicitly, we'll have 0, negative i h bar over 2, i h bar over 2, 0, minus lambda, 0, 0 lambda. And this whole thing will be multiplied to x is equal to 0. And if we want non-trivial solutions for the eigenvector, then the determinant of this term must be equal to 0. Because if the determinant of this term is not equal to 0, then we can find an inverse matrix, and so that means this is just equal to 0. And so if this is going to be non-trivial, then the determinant of this term must be equal to 0. And so uh, the determinant of this matrix, which is just negative lambda, negative lambda, negative i h bar over 2, and i h bar over 2. So the determinant of this term is just equal to 0. So we have lambda square minus negative i times i, that's negative i square, so negative times negative 1, so that's positive 1, uh, times h bar square over 4 is equal to 0. And this implies lambda is equal to plus or minus h bar over 2. So we have two possible eigenvalues, h bar over 2 or negative h bar over 2. And using this, now we can find the associated eigenvectors. So to find the eigenvectors, we just start with sy, and then we multiply this to x, suppose x is the eigenvector, and then sy, let's just write this out explicitly, and then let's suppose x is equal to the matrix, 2 by 1 matrix a, b, and what we're looking for is the relationship between a and b. That would enable this 2 by 1 matrix to be an eigenvector for uh, sy. And so this would be equal to plus or minus h bar over 2 a, b. And this is, e this is true because now we're assuming that a, b is an eigenvector, and then now we can multiply these matrices together. Uh, first of all, the h bar over 2s, they cancel out. And now multiplying these two matrices together, we get 0 times a, which is 0, plus negative i times b. And then we have i times a, plus 0 times b. And this is equal to a plus or minus a, b. And so this gives us two relationships. Negative i, b is equal to a, uh, uh, plus or minus a. And i, a is equal to a plus or minus b. And these two statements are actually the exact same thing, because uh, you can take a look at this part over here. I can move the negative sign to the other side, and that will give me minus plus a. And I can also dump the i to the other side, so we have a over i. And 1 over i, that's just equal to a negative i. So the negative sign switches this back to a plus or minus. So we have plus or minus i a equal to b. And we have i a is equal to a plus or minus b. And it doesn't really matter where you put the plus or minus sign. You can see that both of these statements are saying the exact same thing. And so what this tells us is that uh, this can this is a clue as to what our eigenvector should be. And so now we know that if x, which is equal to the 2 by 1 matrix AB, if this is to be an eigenvector for SY, then B must be equal to plus or minus IA. So B must be equal to plus or minus IA, where for the plus case, this would be the eigenvector associated with the eigenvalue h bar over 2, and the minus case would be the eigenvector associated with the uh, eigenvalue negative h bar over 2. So we have two cases. We have the positive, uh, the spin up case. This would be the case where the eigenvalue is equal to h bar over 2. And there's also the minus case, the spin down case. And this would be the eigenvector associated with the eigenvalue negative h bar over 2. And in order to find a, we can also use normalization. So if you want to normalize this vector, over this 2 by 1 matrix over here, you can always take the Hermitian conjugate and multiply it by itself, which would just give you the conjugate of a, and then times negative i, which is just a conjugate of i, times the conjugate of a, multiplied by a, i, a. And if you add these uh, terms together, you have a conjugate times a, and then plus negative i times i, and then times a times a conjugate a, and negative i times i, that's negative i squared, so that's just equal to 1. So you have 2 of absolute value a squared. So the uh, conjugate of a is just, uh, times a is just absolute value 
a square, so this is where this comes from. And in order for this eigenvector to be uh, normalized, then this product here must be equal to 1. And so this implies a is equal to 1 over the square root of 2. And so this gives us the eigenvector. So for the spin up eigenvector, we have 1 over 2, 1 i, and this would be the case where the eigenvalue is h bar over 2. And then we also have the spin down case. You can see that the only difference between spin down and spin up is that there is a negative sign over here. You can go through the exact same argument and you'll find that a is also equal to 1 over the square root of 2. And so for the spin down case, we have this as the eigenvector, and then the associated eigenvalue is negative h bar over 2. And so this is how you find the eigenvectors and eigenvalues for sy. Now moving on to part b, suppose we have a particle in the state given by this spinner, and now we want to find the probability of getting spin up or spin down if we measure sy. And we can find this probability by considering this as the linear combination of spin up and spin down. And by the generalized statistical interpretation, the probability of spin up, I'll use this to represent the probability, is just the absolute value of c plus squared, and the probability of getting spin down is just the absolute value of c minus squared. So the key now is to find c plus and c minus. And we can find this by considering this, uh, this computational step over here. We can always take the spinner and then multiply it with the Hermitian conjugate of the spin up eigenvector. And you can see that if we apply the Hermitian conjugate of the spin up vector to the uh, state of the particle, we can represent this as c plus times spin up and then c minus times spin down. Now if we just move this inside the bracket, you will get the Hermitian conjugate of spin up multiplied to spin up plus Hermitian conjugate of spin up multiplied to spin down. So this term here is equal to 1 because these eigenvectors are normalized. And then this term here is equal to 0 because Sy is a Hermitian operator. And so that's why its eigenvectors, they're all orthogonal if they have different eigenvalues. So this is always equal to 0. And so we get C+. Plus. So if we do perform this computational step, we will get our C+. Plus. And then we can do the same thing to get C-. minus. We just take the Hermitian conjugate of uh, the spin down state and then apply it to ec uh, the spinner directly and that will give us our c minus and so let's try doing this so c plus as we have seen is just the Hermitian conjugate of the spin up state multi uh, applied to the spinner and we know from part a that the spin up state is given by this term over here so we have 1 over the square root of 2 and then 1 and then negative i because we're taking the Hermitian conjugate and now it becomes a row matrix. So before it was a column matrix. Now it's a row matrix because we've taken the Hermitian conjugate. And then this will be applied to a, b. And so we get a minus i, b. And so that's why the probability of getting spin up is just the absolute value square of c plus. And so this is just 1 over 2 times the absolute value of a minus i, b square. And so this is the probability of getting spin up. And now moving on with c minus, we just repeat the same computational step. We take the Hermitian conjugate of the spin down operator and then apply it to the state of the particle directly. So the Hermitian conjugate of spin down is just the Hermitian conjugate of this term over here. So we have 1 over the square root of 2, and then we turn the column matrix into a row matrix, and then the negative i becomes a positive i, because we're taking the conjugate. So we have 1 and i, and this will be applied to a, b, and then we have a plus i, b. And so this is c minus. And so the probability of getting spin down, this is just absolute value square of c minus, and that's just 1 half a plus i, b absolute value square. And so this is the probability of getting spin down. And now we can do a final check to see if spin, uh, prob the two probabilities add up to 1. So let's just take the two values we have and let's just do a quick check. So we have a minus i b squared plus 1 half a plus i b squared. And absolute value squared, that's just equal to the original complex number multiplied by its conjugate. 
So it's conjugate of a, and then plus i conjugate of b, and then plus one half. We do the same thing over here. a plus i b multiplied by a conjugate minus i conjugate b. And so now we can combine all the terms. We have a times a conjugate, and then we have plus i a times b conjugate, and then we have negative i a conjugate times b, and then we have negative i squared, that's just positive, so positive b absolute value squared. So that's just b times b conjugate. Actually, I should also write this as absolute value a squared. And then here we have a times a conjugate, that's just absolute value a squared. And then we have uh, a times negative i b conjugate. And then we have i a conjugate b. And then we have negative i squared, that's just positive, times absolute value b squared. And you can see some of the terms they cancel out. So this is a times b conjugate. This is negative a times b conjugate. They cancel out. This is a conjugate times b. This is negative a conjugate times b. They also cancel out. In the end, we're left with two absolute value of a square and then absolute val two absolute value of b square. And these, of course, they cancel out. So we're left with absolute value of a square plus absolute value of b square, which is, of course, equal to one because we're assuming that our state of the particle this is normalized. So this is indeed equal to 1. And so this completes our check. The two probabilities do indeed add up to 1. And now finally, moving on to part C, we have sy squared. And we want to know what values we can get if we measure sy squared and the corresponding probabilities. And this is rather easy, because we know if we measure sy, we can either get h bar over 2 or negative h bar over 2. And so of course, when we measure sy squared, we either get h bar over 2 times h bar over 2, which is just h bar square over 4, or negative h bar over 2 times negative h bar over 2, which is also h bar square over 4. So there is a probability of 1 of getting h bar square over 4. And uh, if you're unsatisfied with this argument, you can always take the uh, matrices and then multiply them together. So you can take the matrices representing sy and then you can multiply them, you get h bar square over 4. And then if you multiply these two matrices, you'll get the identity matrix. So that will be something like this. And then you can always find the eigenvectors and eigenvalues for this, and you will see that the only possibility is an eigenvalue of h bar square over 4. And so that's why there's a probability of 1 that you will get this value when you measure sy square.